you to all of you. It's an important occasion and so it's a time for joy, celebration, sharing. What I want to talk to you about is that while our community was getting ready for this celebration, there were certain forces, certain Hindu phobic forces who launched an attack. Uh, this was a politician in Hawaii uh, who uh, attacked another politician, a Hindu one. The Hindu politician is actually Westerner by birth, Hawaiian native. Uh, her name is Tulsi, representing her district and very openly, publicly a Hindu and very supportive of all sorts of Hindu causes. Uh, somebody you can rely on for uh, representing our point of view and there aren't, any, there aren't any others who are really out there in the political spectrum being so open and public about a Hindu identity. So her opponent attacked her and I'll read out some of the, some of the vicious Hindu, anti-Hindu, you know, allegations, comments which were used to uh, kind of rabble rouse Christian uh, support against uh, the Hindu candidate. So uh, the, the, a woman named uh, Angela Kaihu, Kaihu, Kaihu or Kaihui, I don't know how you pronounce it, I'm going to read out. She started this campaign and she's a, she's a, a political contestant uh, against uh, this Hindu candidate. So her poster said things like, do you agree or disagree that a vote for Tulsi is a vote for Satan, the devil? That's one of her. Do you want? So again, then she says, uh, there's artwork in her posters showing a devil with fire in hell. Uh, you know, that this person has. And then there's another one which says, in America, we are fighting a holy war. And it says, Holy Bible versus Gita. Those are the words. Christianity versus Hinduism. Those are her exact words. Then there's a very sort of a, a portrayal, an image of uh, Sri Krishna uh, with some kind of an implication that uh, he's uh, considered to be superior to God. Do you know we campaign, a Hindu phobic campaign went on. Now I don't want you to overgeneralize and say everybody's like that because that's not the case. But my point is deeper. It's not about this particular instance. This instance reminds us and it call, calls upon us to question, introspect some deeper historical things which I want to talk about. The GOP, the party that uh, this person represents, the, the Christian who made the attack, uh, this we don't, we don't approve of it. So the matter ended. But for me, the matter should not end. Because the criticism of this Christian making the Hindu phobic attack was not respect for Krishna, but tolerance. Well, season, let's not say something which will cause us to lose votes or lose campaign contributions. Let us be politically correct. So it's more like a, a let's not be let's not make a political mistake. It's not because we genuinely respect Krishna. So that's a problem for me. That this is a sort of a political decision to disown this rather than really respecting the Hindu faith and coming in, uh, out there. It it also bothers me that there was no mainstream. Islam. Had this been a case of Islamophobia. To be interviewed, and he and uh, there would be CNN all over the place. All these TV people would be interviewing uh, academic people and media people and people from various communities to denounce it. I want to, uh, or if it were anti-Semitic, uh, you know, uh, against Jews or so, there would have been a big outrage. But because it's Hindu phobic. Our community even doesn't stand up and really make a big deal out of it. We are embarrassed. Maybe we are too proud to be victims. Uh, we would rather not, uh, you know, rock the boat. We think we are doing very well materially. I want to talk about this is not this one instance. So please don't get into the details of this instance as though that's the only kind of instance that happens. I want to talk about. 
conscious, the collective conscious, unconscious of the American people, the Western people, Christianity. Where do these images come from? And that's something very important for us to understand. Now, the when, when a Christ, why are Christians afraid of this business of many gods? Yeah, polytheism, uh, images. If you and, and the message I want to give is that. Christianity in Europe was a foreign religion. The white Christian. Christian was a violent invasion of Europe, which used to be pagan. They were names; their own names were different, but the Christians started calling them pagans, and that name became uh, the way they referred to. So the pre-Christian native religions had been there for thousands of years. They really were invaded by a foreign, conquering, aggressive Christianity that converted these white Europeans into Christianity. So at the time of Christ, uh, it's only a Middle Eastern thing. So Christianity is actually an Arab-related, Israeli-related, Middle Eastern religion, south of, the Pacific, uh, south of the Mediterranean. North of the Mediterranean, where it's Europe, did not have Christianity. So Christianity spreads. It takes a thousand years for Christianity to spread gradually more and more north into Europe until it takes over Europe. So it's a thousand years after Christ that Europe becomes fully Christianized or almost fully Christianized. So this, this, is, this is an important thing to remember because the fight between Christians and the native pagans was a very violent one, was a very vicious one. And in the process, well, that means it was not a cakewalk. It, it was not like those guys just gave up and said, fine. You know, it took a long time. So the more violent the conversion process is, the more there's trauma in the unconscious. So in the European Christian unconscious, there is this memory of a, distant, of a past, of their heritage, their ancestors, who were actually not Christians. So to get rid of the pagan religion, it had to be demonized. They are Satan worshippers, they are devil worshippers, uh, they are idolaters. All kinds of things had to be, all kinds of myths had to be created to sort of really oppress them, kill them, justify actions, violence and so on against them. And this is well recorded if you study Christian history, how it spread in Europe, well recorded. Of course, after that, the same kind of process happens in Africa, the invasion of native religions, demonizing them in order to convert them. Then it happens in Latin America, the same kind of thing, and now happening in India. So if you, if you want to understand what is going on in India and what is a likely outcome, you got to, you don't, it's, we often look at Africa and Latin America, but we don't look at Europe. Europe also has the same history, and this is extremely important. So in the European mind, whose people who are Christian, there is an unconscious memory buried of their past. And this, uh, the, the need to demonize that past and constantly abuse it, accuse it, uh, call it evil, uh, has been programmed into them. So the fight against uh, idols, polytheists, uh, female divinities, uh, sacredness of nature, all of that had to be abolished because those were the pagan religions. So this is the point I'm trying to make. When they come across such things in Hinduism, they're reminded of something in their own past which they rejected. Hinduism is reminding them it resembles that which they rejected with violence. That which they rejected they got rid of as something devilish. And so for hundreds of years, it's been pounded into them that this is wrong, this is bad, this is evil, you know, you're, you're going to go to hell. Not because it was done to hate Hindus. Hindus are a recent encounter for them. But this was pounded in them because these are the native religions of Europe that had to be uprooted, eradicated, and, and, and destroyed. So the point I'm making is, it's very easy for a Christian to incite other Christians against Hinduism. It's not so easy to do the same thing for Islam. There are different reasons, for, different ways of fighting Islam in Christianity. But when it comes to fighting Hinduism, they just have to arouse this pagan link and pagan kind of uh, idea that this is, this is devilish. These are things that we have rejected a long time ago. So I uh, want to leave this with you. 
that there are two ways uh, in the Hindus are being uh, attacked. There is the Christian way, which I just talked about, which is to paganize it and then uh, rabble rouse all the such people uh, who are deemed, you know, idol worshippers, many, many gods and multi-armed gods and strange, weird gods and especially goddesses are considered very scarce, very scary and all the native things, all the nature worshipping is considered wrong. Then there's the, there's the other way, the other way of hating which is the left wing, secular, not based on Christianity but human rights, okay, human rights are being violated, caste system, those are other ways and these two the left wing and the right wing sides of the West kind of collaborate often and that's the subject of one of my books, Breaking India. So I want to, uh, uh, Hawaii is a very interesting place and this latest episode I just told you about happens in Hawaii. Christianity in Hawaii is less than 200 years old. So it's one of the newest Christian uh, places. So the memory of the pre-Christian pagan past is rather recent. And the, the pre-Christian native religions of Hawaii are still fighting Christianity. It's not a done deal. They are not eradicated. I mean, people don't want to talk about it. But if you go there, you look up, you go to places where they're still practicing, hiding, afraid, but they're not giving up. So the, the fight against uh, the pagans is very recent, very live, very active. They have live volcanoes also in Hawaii, fantastic ones. But this is a live battle going on. So it's easy to rabble rouse uh, some foreign, you know, pagan kind of an, uh, uh, association of Hinduism in that context. I want, I want you to understand that. So the one thing I would like you to start thinking about is when you come across Westerners who are Christian, which most of them are, remind them that their ancestral religion was actually not Christianity. They are victims of being colonized and being, being invaded by an aggressive Christianity which started around the 4th century in a very aggressive way for almost a thousand years to take over Europe. Remind them of that. And many of them actually reject Christianity or want to go back to their own Wicca, which is called, which was their pre-Christian uh, native religions. They want to go back to that, especially a lot of women, white women want to go back to the Wicca tradition because they resonate with it more. So this is something, it gives you a talking point when you're dealing with Christians that, hey, you Europeans are not really Christian from the beginning. It's a, it's a Middle Eastern religion that you have adopted. It's a foreign religion that you have adopted. This is an interesting point that uh, is historically accurate and Christian historians will actually uh, validate this. Now, all this is part of what I call reversing the gaze. The West studies India very seriously. We don't study the West as seriously. So if something like the episode in Hawaii I'm telling you about, if there's a sim similar episode in India, somebody got raped, somebody got killed, some violence, somebody made a statement against someone else, the Western scholars will immediately link it back to Manu Smriti, Ramayan, uh, you know, all kinds of old historical stuff and blame it on that. And they'll say that these Indians are carrying all that baggage and they'll try to interpret every little thing in that context. So they'll connect the dots uh, in a certain way that they've been taught about who the Indians are. We need to do that in reverse. Not disrespectful, but just objective. That when such a thing happens in the West, rather than taking it as an isolated instance, saying, okay, here's an isolated instance, it's a fight between A and B and that's all it is. We should be able to interpret it in the context of deep culture. What is the deep Western culture? What is there about America, the Christianity, its history, its past, the whole mythology of the West? What is there about it that causes these things to happen? We should be interpreting events in the United States and Europe, whether it is the rise of uh, Donald Trump, uh, whether it is the rise of these kind of episodes, whether it is the school textbooks that are biased against us, we should interpret these not as isolated things, but as a kind of a manifestation of something much deeper. So I will leave that uh, thought with you and uh, look forward to uh, talking to you again in a few days. Namaste.